Well, if you're getting into making your own traces, then one of the things you've probably heard about is twisting rather than crimping the wire. I use twisting a lot because I tend to use our Pike Pro 40 pound seven strand wire for most of my traces. And that's the ideal wire, the seven strands for twisting. You can't really do it with the 19 or 49s. They're much better crimped. Um, but twisting is one of those skills. It's, it's something I've always done for, since I started seriously pike fishing many years ago. Um, and it's just my preferred way of making most traces. Now, to be honest, it's better off to make your traces at home, whichever way you're doing it, but especially if you're twisting. And the reason is the, this first stage, really, because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a lighter just to heat until it gets orange hot. The last inch or so of wire, even before I cut it off the spool. And what that is, that's actually a process called annealing, which is basically softening up that wire. And you'll see that the, the wire there has actually gone like a grey colour rather than the normal brown. And I'll show you why I've done that in a sec. So right, I'm going to cut the wire off at the end of the section that I've heated. So I've got that on there, put the tools there. And then what I'm going to do is fold over the wire there you go, just at the end of that heated section. You see how easy that, that formed a loop. I'll try and do that on the other end, where I've not heated it up. It's all springy, doesn't want to close down at all. Nothing like is good. And so what that, that's done is it actually softened the wire, that heat, that annealing process. It softened it up, it just makes it much, much easier to work. And you can do the same if you're crimping as well to form your loop. The only problem is, what I don't want is that, uh, that uh, heated section is going to be slightly weaker than normal wire. Right, this time I'm going to make up uh, my twist on one of my trebles. So this would normally be the bottom treble, um, whether I was using a one hook or a two hook trace. Uh, this is the way I'd fix it on. So I'm going to take my treble and I'm going to hold it to start with, with the single point facing upwards so the eye is straight. And I'm going to pass that loop through the eye of the hook, bring it up and then take it around the eyes of all the hooks and there you go pull it down and then just using my thumb now just going to bring it around the eye of the hook and it locks really really nicely and you can see that's actually locked on to that treble already so now just to finish up the loops I'm now going to turn the hook over so now I've got the single hook the one that's at a different angle to the other two facing down with the eye still flat Put my twisting tool in and then push that wire tag out to 90 degrees and then trap that between my finger and thumb again and then slowly no rush nice and slowly and controlled just twist that down and there you go you get some really nice even twists very very neat and tidy and then just to finish off i've got swivel cover I'm just going to put that on and push that down and over the end, over the, the shank of the hook. And there we go. So it covers up the twist and the shank, but I think more crucially, it actually extends the shank of the hook. And when you get a, a take and you wind down onto it, that actually acts like a liner liner in carp fishing. And it, it gives you more chance of hooking the fish in the scissors when you want to hook them. And there you go, that's twisting. Like I say, best done at home really, if you're out on a boat or something or on a windy day, I mean, I'm very lucky it's a sunny day with no wind today. Very, very difficult to heat the wire properly um, outdoors on a windy day, so best to do it indoors. But a nice simple way of making your traces and uh, a different way of doing it. And which way you choose is really up to you. They all work really well. Thanks for watching.